and welcome to Live in the Hive, the only online magazine show dedicated to theatre across Greater Manchester. And of course, in association with the iconic city brand, I Love Manchester. Yes, they support community and culture across the city. And it is great to be with you this evening because we have got a fantastic amount of guests for you. You are going to love the show. I'm Michelle and I'm with you for the next half hour taking you through live in the hive. But who is coming up? Who's on our guest list? Well, I can tell you we've got a guy who's come all the way from America. Yes, just to be on our show. He he is called Will and he is going to be telling us about creating a brand new musical called The Regulars that is coming to Hope Mill in concert and we are going to be talking to one of the stars of Bat Out of Hell the musical. If you've ever seen it you will know it is a wonderful show. She's called Martha Kirby and she is going to be telling us why she's coming to Manchester tomorrow night. Yes! The bat is back in Manchester. All this and we have got lots more. We've also got Greater Manchester Theatre News and uh, it's been another week in Greater Manchester full of exciting announcements that we have to tell you about. So that is coming up a little bit later on. And we've got a very special performance from the cast of The Regulars that you definitely won't want to miss. So stay with me here and you can get involved during the show as well. So if you want send any comments in then please do tell us if you're liking the show tell us if you have any comments about our guests if you've got anything what you want to tell me about any shows that you've seen all of that can be put right here on this screen so as i say stay tuned but first up we are going to be chatting to the wonderful martha kirby as i said she is a west end star she's currently on tour with bat out of hell the musical and i have to say this was a hard week for fans of meatloaf he passed away at the age of 74. What a musical legend. And of course, I had to start the interview by asking her how she felt and what it was like for her being in a musical like Bat Out of Hell at this moment in time. So take a look at what Martha had to say. Now, Martha, really pleased you can join us in The Hive. I know we had this interview booked in already and then the shocking news has come about Meatloaf passing away. So it just seems like it's really tinged with a bit of sadness, although, you know, his music has brought so much joy to people over the years, hasn't it? It really has. I think we, we see it every night, the amount of joy and expression that people have in the audience when listening to the music like he, he brings so much energy and life to the stage and to the world already even when not being here so yeah it's an honor to kind of keep pushing his music forward and um sharing it with everyone yeah and it will, it will be an honour every night to have him live on in this music because I know that last year we lost Jim, didn't we? Jim Steinman and, you know, both Jim and Meatloaf are massively a part of this show. So I'm imagining every show going forward now, there might be a little bit of a nod up to uh, the sky and a little bit of a an extra kind of, right, we're doing it for you guys. Yeah, I think we've, we've had that from the start. I mean, you can't, you can't not appreciate both of their works. It's something that is the reason why I wanted to do the show because of the music. So the nod is always there to them. Obviously, we got to, we got to have him here in Manchester because mm -hmm. the history between Bow of Hell, the musical and Manchester, I think we take the privilege of going, we saw it first. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> it's ownership for sure. Absolutely. I mean, gosh, that might have been back in 2017, I think, that he was here and the musical came. And it's been smashing it ever since. I mean, audiences love Bat Out of Hell, the musical. What is it like for you going on stage, playing Raven, you know, the leading lady in this part every night? And I've got to say, there's a lot of energy in that <laughs> cast. <laughs> there's so much energy and it's, it's honestly, it's so much fun. It is knackering, but it's worth the whole roller coaster journey. Like it's just the most energy fueled couple of hours. It's epic. Yeah. It's visually beautiful. 
and we were so lucky to have a show that incorporates so many different technical aspects of theatre and it just is a a showing of all this industry can provide it's 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 wicked and what is it like performing those epic numbers because the show's epic but the numbers are epic there's quite quite a lot of lyrics going on martha what what's that like for you <laughs> um it's daunting it was very daunting taking it on but it, you just you can't do it a disservice like they're just such epic songs and they're theatrical songs in itself so to take something on like that is incredible to be able to sing it every night is incredible it's a lot of work but it's yeah it's crazy now i've seen it a number of times i have to say i'm a real bat fan definitely i love <laughs> going to see this show but tell us a little bit for anybody who hasn't seen it and i know it's a bit of a surreal storyline plot yeah <laughs> It's actually scarily more accurate in today's life, I think. It's becoming a lot more apparent in the actual reality of the world today. Um, it's very post-apocalyptic. Um, a love story that people are divided in sense of gangs and sense of um, views and political opinions. And um, essentially, it's for Raven anyway, it's just wanting to explore and explore freedom and um kind of owning her right to experience the world the way she would like to experience it and having not been able to do that in such as life now we've we've been cooped up for nearly two years with the pandemic so it kind of brought a lot of realism to this to this show Mm -hmm. absolutely and you know like you say there's lots of themes there i always when i watch it go come on dad give her a break you know <laughs> let go of those reins a little and let raven fly um <laughs> <laughs> but i am really excited because you know we had you last year which was such a welcome after not seeing shows for so long to have you know bat out of hell the musical come back to manchester but you're coming again tomorrow monday you're going to be coming which is absolutely fantastic it's a big night of musicals and it's hosted by the national lottery tell us about kind of getting involved uh, well, we were asked to take part in it, and of course, we could absolutely not refuse. We were so excited to even come back to Manchester. Um, and it's going to be one performance. I don't know if I'm allowed to tell you what one it is. So we'll leave that to the imagination. Um, but we're so excited to be um, a part of it. And yeah, me and Glenn are thrilled to have a little trip to Manchester again and see everyone. Oh, uh, yeah, it'll be like coming home. And you mentioned Glenn there, Glenn Adamson, who plays Strat. Now, I interviewed him last year, and, uh, you know, he's absolutely wonderful as well. You are both so talented. Is it going to be great to kind of be on an arena stage? Because I think that could be the next step for Bat Out of Hell, the musical. You know, it is like a big rock performance. And I think the show that you're doing on Monday night will be quite fitting. Mm -hmm. I mean, the show lends, it's, it's massive in itself. So then it lends itself to an even bigger stage. So it would be very exciting to see it on that scale and in that venue, in that sound. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. You need to come on and go, hello, Manchester. <laughs> <laughs> you have to get I <laughs> I've always wanted to do that. Really have, really have. But how nice will it be getting the theatre community together? Because you're up there with a number of shows that are coming from the West End on tour. So like Dear Evan Hansen, um, uh, School of Rock, uh, you've got Dream Girls. Is it quite weird to actually get the chance to get performers? And I, I imagine some friends of yours who are performers in the same place together. Oh, it's it's incredible and it's such a nice opportunity to just sit and appreciate and be grateful for everyone's individual work. So I'm I'm so excited to just sit back and be entertained by lots and lots of people and lots of different shows and yeah, just take every opportunity to learn from everyone. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So you're you you might be peeking in the wings and seeing what they're all doing, yeah? We'll definitely be peeking in. Because you are actually on tour still. You're at the new Wimbledon Theatre, aren't you? Uh, yeah. I mean, oh, that must be fantastic right now. Yeah, it's lovely. And it's so nice to be around lots of family and friends and a lot of people who are 
staying at their houses, which is lovely to sort of reconnect with people. So yeah, it's it's wicked to be in London. And I have had a look at your tour dates and you are coming up north. We're going to have to wait a little bit more, but I think <laughs> well, you're in Stoke. I think you're coming in July and October. Um, you're coming to places like Liverpool as well. So not, not too far to us to travel and get in the car and come and see you. Are you going to be doing this for the foreseeable future, Martha? Do you, you know, have you found kind of that role that you really quite like and uh you know quite happy with right now yeah I love I love doing the show I love the people we've got an amazing cast and amazing team and it's just I'm very grateful to be doing what I'm doing especially in this time so yeah for the foreseeable before you go I can't not let you go without asking what is your favorite bit in Bat Out of Hell the musical what is that moment where you go I love that there's too many, but some are really niche and very specific. I'll give you a niche one. So during the birthday party scene, um, Rob, who plays Falco, my dad, he sits down and the waiters have to put the chair under him really neatly so it's all seamless and sits down. And sometimes it just doesn't, <laughs> it just doesn't time the best. And I'm just waiting to see if Rob's going to fall on his bum on the floor, which provides me with hours of entertainment. So that's my very niche one. But uh, specifically... Um, I think anything for love. I love yeah. it. everyone's on stage at that point and it's, it's, yeah, it just feels very supported and all together. It is. It's, it's such a beautiful song. And I think, you know, that is probably an, one of the ways that I will remember Meatloaf going ahead, that song, and it's beautiful and fitting. And I cannot wait to see you rock that stage once again. I will be there at Big Night of Musicals at the arena. And do you know what? I'm even going to watch it on the BBC One the week after. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, what a wonderful actress there and performer, Martha Kirby. And yes, she is going to be wowing everybody along with other companies tomorrow night at the AO Arena in Manchester for the National Lottery's Big Musical Night. Oh, oh my God, big night of musicals. It's going to be absolutely epic. I'm going to be there. So if you see me madly waving my hands, you will know, yes, that's Michelle from Live in the Hive. But uh, do say hello if you see me. Anyway, moving on, we have got loads to tell you this week about theatre news. So it is time for this. Yes, Greater Manchester Theatre News. And something very exciting has been announced this week for fans of this show, Peaky Blinders, an absolute massive hit on BBC and obviously worldwide. Now, who'd have thought that Peaky Blinders would be taking it to the stage and becoming a dance performance show? Now, this is going to be like nothing you have ever seen before. You will know the world-renowned Rambert Dance Company. Now, they have joined forces with the Lowry, which is brilliant news. Yes, the Lowry have co-produced Peaky Blinders, The Redemption of Thomas Shelby. Now, what can you expect? Well, you are going to have the story of Peaky Blinders and, as it says on the tin, lots about Thomas Shelby and his romantic life, as well as all the drama that goes on in between all of that. And you're going to have some of the original music because Stephen Knight created Peaky Blinders as you might know and he is very much a part of this production so you're going to have some amazing dance you're going to have some brilliant scenes recreated from Peaky Blinders that you will know if you are a hardcore fan and as I say you've got music from the show and original music too you have got to wait hold your horses it's not coming until March 2023 to the Lowry it is going to premiere in London though in October of this year the great thing is though that tickets are now on sale so if you want to grab them and do because I'm sure this is definitely one that is going to really sell sell fast now moving a little bit closer to home just to talk about something that's going on right now well 
This is the Oldham Coliseum and they have announced this week that they are inviting any passionate and innovative theatre companies or individuals to apply to become an arts um, an associate artist. Now this is a role that is going to go on for 12 months. It's a brilliant opportunity to participate in the theatre and also have a real mentoring role. So if you are interested all you have to do is go to their website to find out more about applying and also more about the role but a brilliant opportunity for somebody who wants to get really into the heart of theatre. Now talking of theatre and talking of one of my favourite theatres Hope Mill we have got a brilliant guest next up he's called Will Shishmanian he's come all the way from America to join forces with Will and Joe from Hope Mill. It's all part of the Turn On Film which is starting next week. It's called The Regulars in Concert and I just had to find out what this new music was all about. Take a look at this. We have a American in Manchester. Welcome to the city. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm so excited to be here. Have you ever been to Manchester before? Are you new to us? <laughs> I'm very, I'm so new. I'm I'm new to the whole country. This was my first international flight, actually, to come over here the other day. Wow! Um, <laughs> so, so this must be like really quite big. You must have like arrived and gone. Oh, this is Manchester. Yeah, it's it's felt very surreal, honestly. And I was so lucky that we connected with Hope Mill Theater and that they're so interested in our show. And and to get to come over here for the first time for my music work has been very surreal and just very exciting. So I, I'm just very grateful to be here and to get to check out Manchester. And we walked around a bunch yesterday and got to see all the canals, which I I'm just think it's such a great place. You are absolutely going to love it here, Will. It is a great, great city, as is New York. And, and you're from Queens, aren't you? So do explain. How did this come about that, you know, a guy who is a musician and composer and he's rocking it in New York, hooks up with Will and Joe, who, you know, are leading the way with Hope Mill Theatre to bring this to us, the regulars in concert? I think um, it has more to do with my collaborator, Miss Hazel Jade, who's our director, and she and I have been, I, I'm the author, but she, she and I have been really going step by step through the show together and, and she helped craft the story. And she's the one that connected with the two of them and um, they just, they liked the material and we uh, had a Zoom meeting with them, obviously, since we couldn't do anything in person. And we really were excited about the energy and that they have around the pieces that they bring to their to their theater. And, and it seemed like the right fit. So we, here we are, I you know, several months later, ready to finally do it in person. It's amazing. And, you know, you've hit the nail right on the head with Joe and Will and Hope Mill Theatre. What I love about the theatre is they bring revivals to the stage. You know, they bring new musicals to the stage and musicals that need telling, that need showing to audiences. And I think from what I've heard about the regulars, this is definitely one that has to be heard and seen. Tell us about it and, and how you came up with the idea. Um, well, I, I guess the short version, is, especially for a concert, is uh, the regulars follows the story of a character named Mark, who is a transgender man who has moved from a rural area where his family and community hasn't been super accepting of his transition to a new town where he can basically start over, which is something that has happened throughout history, really, that people move so they can start fresh, trans or not. And uh, this story is about him being accept seen and accepted in his identity for the first time, both around groups of men and also around the queer community, and him kind of figuring out where does he feel most comfortable and kind of dealing with his own male privilege for the first time and figuring out, you know, how is he going to communicate with other men? And then alongside him, the character Danny is a queer woman who is opening this rural area's first gay bar. So it's kind of him finding his place um, in where he feels the most seen and supported and the importance of chosen family and the importance of community and how all different kinds of people make that up, not just in big cities, but in all sorts of 
areas. And a lot of times rural areas are forgotten because people think, oh, nobody can live. People won't be accepting there. But at the end of the day, we all have similar issues that just we see through different lenses. And it's really about um, a larger community realizing that together. Do you know what? When you say it like that, I just keep thinking, why has this not been done before? It seems so relevant to today. And the story now, it's like, why is it taking so long to get to the stage, Will? <laughs> yeah, it's it's tough. I mean, I, I think he, some some people get nervous that, um, especially trans, queer people, LGBT people, it's getting more and more common to see stories. And, and especially with gay characters, there's been so many coming out stories. We're starting to see like couples that, that are gay that are just living their lives. But there's still a lot of people that really don't think that transitioning is is valid or or you know that we're weird or or something but i i the, what's at the heart of the regulars for me is is you know we all gender is a performance for everybody we all perform gender in a way so that people perceive us and we all have these things that we feel like we have to hide from other people so i do think it's very relevant not just as a trans person to tell these stories but um to help other people understand that we have more in common and i, I think i think the timing it's sad that it has taken this long, but I think the conversations, especially in the theater world, have been happening more and more often now where where people are a little bit more ready to see it. And hopefully it seems like Hope Mill is, is really the right place to kick it off. Um, so oh, really absolutely. I mean, I saw Rent there last year when we were kind of allowed to, when we were coming out of a pandemic into another mm -hmm. pandemic. I was lucky enough to see a few of the performances. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, when I heard about the regulars, there was a little bit of the Rent story or kind of the ethos in there in a different way. And I mean, gosh, Rent has become massive. So, you know, right. is that what you hope for the regulars? I mean, it would be amazing. I mean, it, it is like this queer ensemble cast and people and people figuring out how they fit together. So it definitely there are some elements that overlap. And I'm a guitarist. Is, a guitar is my primary instrument. So, of course, Grant has this huge guitar rock score. And this is more folk rock, but and especially the concert we'll do at Hope Mill is just going to be um, uh, piano and, and guitar. I'm going to be playing a little bit of mandolin, but I'm only so-so at mandolin. <laughs> but guitar is my primary instrument. So I, I definitely see a lot of the overlap there. And, and hopefully people continue to see themselves. A lot of the feedback we've been getting from, we did a, a virtual reading of the first four scenes. And it's so cool to get feedback from all sorts of people that they saw themselves in that. So I, I think that I'm hoping that that's the kind of response that we get when we are able to do it live in person with the harmonies in the room and not just doing pre-recorded music that we're streaming on Zoom. Oh, absolutely. And you mentioned then the genre of music, you know, folk music. Again, I think that's something quite fresh for a musical, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. There's, there's, of course, there's been stuff like Bright Star and um, uh, Bridges in Madison County, of course, that have more of those acoustic scores. But uh, there is definitely a, a, an expected like contemporary musical theater vibe that is very piano driven. Um, and it's so it's really exciting to to be able to kind of strip things back to these very earthy sounds um, at, that I think helps things feel um familiar to people in, in a way but still fresh like you're saying so that's why i'm excited about the sound and it's in concert that we're going to see this on the 29th because we do yes. have to wait until 2023 which is just around the corner will just around the corner right. yes <laughs> <laughs> for it to come in its full version so what can we expect from the concert will there be any talking around kind of you know the lead up to the songs happening what, yeah. what, how will it work? So we'll have some kind of mini scenes leading into the songs. I think we're doing about 12 songs and um, there are some scenes that we've written out that we're gonna experiment with putting in uh, that don't lead up to a song that might help bridge some of the, the gaps in the story. But if, uh, depending on what our rehearsals look like, we also have a plan. I think there are four instances in which our director, Miss Hazel, is going to come in and kind of read a short synopsis of what book is 
totally required to understand the context of the song, especially some of these deeper emotional moments. We don't want to throw it at some, the audience and be like, well, you know, nice tune, but what's going on? So there, there will be um, a storyline that explains at least the general, a couple, a couple of the characters we did have to cut for just to keep it at around an hour. Um, so there is a couple more plot, there are a couple more plot lines and a couple more characters that will be introduced once we get to see a full stage version, but you'll get the gist of, our main couple of characters and how their journeys intersect and and what happens in this town. Oh my gosh, it's an exciting tease to what lies ahead in 2023. And that's when you'll be back at Hope Mill as well. You see, you'll be a resident by then, Will. You'll love yeah, Manchester so much. <laughs> I'm excited. I, I'm already, it's where our Airbnb is so close to the theater that I'm already walking back and forth by myself. I'm like, oh, I'm a pro already. <laughs> but, Have you so. had a good milky brew uh, and have you had fish and chips yet no but i've already had joe point out the fish and chips uh place that i must go to which i forgot the name but i know by sight um so i'm excited to uh try that and i haven't had really i mainly had coffee yesterday because i oh. <laughs> i was up for like 30 hours because of my flight and i figured i would just power through the next day and get out i'll of let you off schedule. i'll let you off <laughs> as long as when you order your fish and chips you have fish chips and gravy okay i will i'll do that <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, that has got me so excited. I love things that are new and fresh, and that totally sounds like that. What a nice guy Will was. Absolutely wonderful. So if you do want to go and see that, then do head down to Hope Mill Theatre on the 29th of January. But we have got a bit of an exclusive for you now because we're going to play out of the show with one of the tracks from the regulars. So do enjoy this. And as I say, if you like it, you know where to head. Now on next week's show, do join me here on Live in the Hive at eight o'clock on Sunday because we have got great guests again. We are joined by director Cash Arshad and he is directing the Bolton Octagon's production of An Adventure. And we're also joined by the Oldham Coliseum's production that is coming, which is not flicks. Not Netflix, not fix. It is the improvised musical and Emma Reed from that show is joining me here in the hive. So until then, don't forget to log on to I Love Manchester's website for all the latest news of theatre and what's on across Greater Manchester. And you can find me on Live in the Hive social media channels as well if you want any of the backstage gossip and any of the news and reviews as well. I'll see See you next week. Till then, take care. I never wanted you to think I didn't love you. I needed time to understand. I watched you cross into a space I'd never been to. Each step a little further from the life I planned I didn't know how to protect you While I struggled to shake all my teachings That the Lord doesn't make mistakes Now I see you in your truth standing strong and I think maybe this was God's plan all along. All I wanted was for you to really try. But I know it wasn't right You were so hard to impress Now I've grown so proud of your confidence So where does it leave us here tonight? It's not too late to start over This mother and son are family
Only stories change, but a brighter chapter's just begun. Now I see you in your truth, standing strong. And I think maybe this was God's plan. All along.